I hope you appreciate that today I'm channeling both my Kenergy and my Barbitude. Just for you people. Can you see it? I'm wearing a shirt that is like magenta. Can, can I, do I need to stand up on this to show it to you? Am I gonna fall? Can you see it? Look, look! I'm so excited! I'm so excited to talk about it. This was such a such a good time at the movies and I'm honestly so incredibly excited to talk about it because there are so many things that we can discuss and deconstruct but I don't want to be a bummer. I don't want to go straight into all the different analogies and metaphors and readings of capitalism versus feminism, patriarchy versus feminism, the place of women in society. Let's start about the simple stuff. Is it fun? Barbie is incredibly Fun. It's incredibly beautiful. I love the lush production design. I really love the way this movie looks as well. If you can say something about Greta Garrig's filmography is that you can't really see like a connection in between her films unless you just look at the script, unless you look at the different performances that she managed to get out of her actresses. But here we have almost like an auteur kind of movie that it doesn't really feel like her but at the same time it feels a hundred percent like her. It feels like she was giving an entire blank slate to do whatever she wanted with the project itself. The choice is now yours. The first one, the high heel. You have to want to know, okay? Do it again. The movie makes fun of itself, makes fun of Mattel as well, who are the creators of Barbie at the end of the day, the people who own the IP and who probably like gave the permission to make this movie at the end of the day. This is exactly like the Lego movie. That's why I put the Lego movie here behind me because if you love the Lego movie, you're gonna love Barbie as well. Of course, they're working on different themes, but at the end of the day, I feel like they share some grounds, especially if you look at the amount of care that was put into the action sequences, the musical numbers, the characters, and also playing with the IP itself. When you're watching the Barbie movie, it really reminds you of being a child and playing with dolls or playing with just toys in general, where you have to rely a lot on imagination. For example, this movie is starring a lot of different versions of Barbies and Cans. They're all called Barbie and they're all called Can, but they all have different personalities, they all have different job descriptions, but at the same time, they spend so much time referring to each other as Barbie and Ken, which is something that can only work within a weird kind of like cartoon environment. And you have to let your imagination free and not take it too seriously. Otherwise, you just have a really hard time enjoying this movie. I was sitting next to someone, for example, who was literally just like this for the entire movie. He didn't laugh at all. He didn't like relate to anything going on in screen. And I'm not saying that I used to play with Barbies because actually I don't think I used to play with Barbies. I used to play with dinosaurs and then I kind of jumped almost immediately to playing with Legos. But it's the kind of same thing, right? Because when you're playing with inanimate objects, you're trying to make up stories. Sometimes you're destroying them, creating a different backstory for each and every one of them. So it's kind of the same thing. Even though Barbie recently has gathered like a bit more of attention from specifically the feminist movement because of like all the representation issues and also what Barbie stands for. But let's not go into that yet because I want to talk about the musical numbers I want to talk about the soundtrack and I want to talk about the casting and the performances Let's start with those two. Margot Robbie and Ryan Gosling are perfect in this movie. But to be honest, everyone is perfect in this movie. There are so many fun cameos that I don't want to spoil because honestly, this movie has a lot of surprises. And even from a screenwriting perspective, I was not expecting the movie to go into this weird direction that it actually ends up going into. But Ryan Gosling and Margot Robbie, right? We were talking about them. I feel like they deserve an Oscar just for the perfect casting because they are Barbie 
and Ken just from like a persona perspective on how we perceive them since the beginning of their career to today. We know they're two talented actors but at the same time they have this weird dreamlike energy and Ryan Gosling really channeled his uh, notebook basically attitude that he used to have at the beginning of his career. What do you want? I... What do you want? I don't know. What it... do you want? I don't know. What do you want? He completely lost all of the darkness that he had in other movies like his Nicholas Winding Refn movies or his like thrillers or even Blade Runner and stuff like that and he's just so incredibly charming and so incredibly funny. If you like the movie The Other Guys for example you're gonna love this type of Ryan Gosling performances because it's the same kind of thing. He's not taking himself seriously at all and even though he seems to be like a very simple character there is a lot of depth hidden behind that layer layer of simplicity and this is what the movie is about. The movie is about kind of like destroying the Barbie plastic world and revealing what is going on underneath it and basically kind of like opening up the eyes of all of these dolls and all of these imagined people to kind of like shine a light to the fact that they can be whatever they want. They don't have to just be a job description. They don't have just to have one thing that defines them. This is like the main idea behind this movie and it works so well and it's the same thing we had going on with the Lego movie as well where they play with the idea of what it means to be a Lego character how conforming is so important for a Lego character because your life is defined by the clothes that you're wearing because of course as a Lego character you're allowed to change the head and your pants and put a different helmet for example and swap professions but it's not exactly how the game is constructed the game is constructed to have a lot of different characters with a lot of different job descriptions and for each and every one of them to fulfill their role in the weird society that you're building as a child and it's the same thing here in Barbie and we're trying to deconstruct that. I was kind of surprised because there are so many musical numbers but not too many that it becomes like a, an annoying musical where basically you're just asking yourself why are these people talking to each other in this way? Why are they singing to each other? Why am I suddenly in a weird MTV musical video? Video. It's an emotional resolution. That's where the musical numbers actually appear and they work so well And it's so incredibly fun and it's so incredibly colorful And I really like when they do that kind of stuff because just the movie goes so smoothly Honestly, I didn't see the time passing by and I had such a good time from the beginning to the end Closer I am If we talk about the script once again, I was kind of worried when I looked at the trailers but also when I came in and I watched the first act of this movie when it really felt like I was watching something that I already seen. It felt a bit like the Lizzie McGuire movie where it's a mix of like animation and special effects and the real life. It feels like Who Framed Roger Rabbit, Looney Tunes Back in Action or Looney Tunes like Space Jam for example where the main goal is to take these characters, this weird characters and to put them into the real world and spend most of the time kind of like teaching to these animated characters that the world is not as easy as you think and it actually sucks but it's not what it happens the movie is set up on this idea of going to the real world but you actually don't spend that much time in it and I'm so incredibly glad because basically we turn the Barbie world into the universe that we care about and that we want to preserve as much as possible so it turns the audience members into children basically basically, where they want to keep their innocence as compact as possible. They don't want to destroy it, but at the same time, we have to embrace change because that's how life works. Once again, this is one of the main themes of the movie. But let's head into spoilers right now because there are so many things that I want to talk about which are, well, spoilers, of course. <laughs> Actually, I received a message a couple of days ago where a person was like, should I go and watch it? Because it really feels like the kind of like capitalistic, perfectly packaged feminism that I hate when it comes to movies and that Hollywood really focuses on in the last few years. If you look at like the female Ghostbusters movie and if you look at the female Ocean's Eleven, for example, where the entire concept is just doing a, a feminist spin and really a feminist spin because it's not really an actual feminist spin of a 
really popular thing so that more women will actually buy tickets and go and see it but no this movie is not actually like that at all and it addresses this problem at the very core of the movie because this movie is about capitalism but it's also about exploring the story of Barbie trying to retrace its roots and understanding what the character actually was at its beginning at its origins so it's kind of like an origin story for Barbie and for all the Mattel characters but mostly Barbie and Ken of course and we have a lot of other characters which have been discontinued and they play a lot of like meta jokes on that for me for example they flew completely over my head because I'm not really I don't know that much about the Barbie dolls and I don't know that much about those kind of things but they were still incredibly funny because I could see how a couple of men sitting behind the desk might try to appeal more to women and to girls as well by creating these incredibly weird characters like there is a one for example where you can like see her boobs like growing and it's supposed to be like a Barbie that is going through puberty but it's incredibly weird it's so incredibly weird and they even have a Barbie that is supposed to be pregnant and I'm actually surprised that they didn't make the joke where when these actually corporate CEOs get into the Barbie world and they see the pregnant Barbie they might have said something like oh my god for how long have you been pregnant in this universe this is so bad we're gonna get cancelled over this that would have been such an incredible joke and I'm kind of surprised that they didn't do it I think this movie could have been incredibly bad honestly when I was watching this movie I was like there are so many ways in which this movie could have just been so incredibly bad such a huge cash grab of just playing on the nostalgia things placing as many hints as possible kind of like the Lego movie 2 <laughs> This is the most disturbing thing I've ever seen. But no, because they actually actively explore what it means to be a Barbie, but also what it means to be a woman. And that's the interesting part. There was like an incredible monologue that one of the main characters does within this movie here, where the movie theater went completely silent. No one was laughing anymore. And they were just looking at the screen and feeling like just reality crumbling and women's lives being put on a pedestal where everyone could see them and understand all the pressure that goes with being a woman existing as a woman it started as a girl boss kind of thing but then it went so deep they like they embraced it so much and they explored it so much within so different so many different characters and they give voices to so many different women when it comes to body shapes when it comes to trans identity for example but it didn't really feel cheap anymore it just felt like they were taking control over the movie and they were telling us something and it's kind of interesting because it goes into very deep moments where we start talking about what the Barbie stands for and there is this controversy about how Barbie has always been incredibly toxic and kind of like representing everything wrong with capitalism just in general the idea of packaging like the perfect female body or the perfect women's body as well and giving you the idea that basically society is at its best right now and you have so many different opportunities you can be whatever you want but at the same time it's just an idea it's not actually Actually done in practice and they do this incredible thing where we get to actually talk to the creator of Barbie and to kind of like put reality versus fiction and to have this realization of like why are we putting so much pressure on a doll why are we asking a doll which is like an inanimate object that is literally impossible to look like a human being to have the exact same experience of a human being do you know what I mean it's something that we don't really think about we're like we want our toys yes to be more about representation so that everyone can feel represented and stuff and this toy is not to give the bad like lessons to children but at the same time isn't that what real life is for why do we expect toys to be like almost like perfect versions of human beings a perfect version of a human being doesn't exist and if you want an actual human being then go play with an actual human being don't play with a toy because a toy will never be a human being do you know what I mean I really love that talk there it kind of reminds me of Toy Story small soldiers all of those kind of existential movies that kind of like make you wonder uh, what does it feel like to actually be a toy being played with and being stuck into the body of a toy as well don't get sucked in this is our nightmare Amy I know this is unrealistic and bad for women but is it bad because I feel pretty good I mean this ass won't quit that was 
quite incredible and I was not expecting to have like an existential journey in such a fun and weird and colorful movie. I really loved of course that this movie is addressing the patriarchy and toxic masculinity in a kind of interesting way where basically the doll of Ken played by Ryan Gosling when he goes to the real world he kind of like gets all the worst possible lessons that he could learn from the real world and he goes back to the Barbie world and try to apply them. He tries to shape the world in a way that it reflects the real world instead of doing the opposite because kind of like we want Barbies as we said before to represent the best versions of ourselves but he doesn't care about that he just wants to be seen as someone special he wants to be taken seriously by Barbie because Barbie can represent everything in the universe while Ken's don't really have that much of a personality they don't really have that much going on they're Kenning everywhere and they're canning so hard that they're gonna can themselves blind if they don't stop canning. <laughs> and it's kind of sad it makes you really sad about Ken but I feel like it's the perfect way of addressing that kind of masculinity where you feel almost like you don't exist you feel like you don't matter and how easy it is for people to convince you and drag you towards like alt-right things or toward like toxic masculinity as well kind of like giving you the idea and the impression that if you represent like toxic masculinity if you are a real man then people will actually consider you as a human being being and you will have more power and you will feel more fulfilled as well well there's actually something broken inside of you and that's something that we address in this movie where Barbie talks to Ken and she is like you need to figure out who Ken is you need to fix yourself so basically the entire like message of this movie is men go to therapy that's the best that you can do stop trying to give yourself excuses on why you're not succeeding at life or why other people are succeeding faster than you just figure out what makes you happy and do that instead of trying to make yourself miserable and make other people miserable as well to kind of reflect your own state of being so that there is a weird like balance of negativity in the world and it was kind of profound I feel like that's maybe a critique that some people might have where maybe they give Ken almost too much space in this Barbie movie but I think it's a really interesting thing that they explore when it comes to the Barbie and Ken dichotomy because maybe it's not supposed to be Barbie and Ken it's supposed to be Barbie and it's Ken. It's Barbie and it's Ken. It's like two different characters that live within the same universe but they don't have to be together. They can exist on their own and it's kind of cool. It's kind of like something that you could apply on the real world as well especially when it comes to like compulsory heterosexuality or the idea that when it comes to the patriarchy as well we get this idea as men that we are defined by our sexual history or by just another woman Woman, for example or being in a relationship with a woman anyways like getting married dating having sex having children as well which is kind of like an extension of course of getting married and finding a girl etc and basically we define ourselves through this prism instead of defining ourselves through what makes us happy wow that is so powerful <laughs> Academy Award. <laughs> we are continents as well. Have you noticed that Will Farrell is playing almost exactly the same type of character that he was playing in the Lego movie? Maybe he doesn't really have an interesting character arc like he does in the Lego movie, but it's still quite cool. And I really like the corporate kind of CEO part of this movie here. It didn't really feel forced, but it felt quite funny. The idea also that all of these people wearing suits, they don't really have their own identity. It's just like a copy and paste version of the same person and of course this movie as I said is talking about capitalism and it's kind of deconstructing the idea of what it means to be a feminist and what it means to pretend to be a feminist as well in a very like capitalist way and Will Farrell and the other CEOs or whatever they kind of like represent that idea where they're trying to make you believe that they're feminists while at the same time they're actually not it's just because it's what's gonna sell you more dolls it's gonna sell you a different kind of experience that's what matters to them 
time and it's really sad. I really like where the movie ends as well. I really like the fact that Margot Robbie slash Barbie slash Barbara kind of like gets to have a life. It's really interesting that the movie ends on her going to her first like gynecologist appointment because it would have been not as interesting if she was heading actually to a job interview because that's already what has been established within the Barbie universe that Barbies can be anything but maybe this Barbie here she just wants to be a normal human being and what do normal human beings do? do? They go to the doctor, they go to gynecologist, they go grocery shopping, they do normal people things and it's actually pretty cool. I really liked how they ended this movie and I really love the entire existential journey that Robbie goes through and I also love the meta narrative that is going on within this movie here because we have a narrator who of course reminds me a lot of like the Devil Wears Prada thing where she's kind of like interpreting things in a very different way and kind of like peeling different layers and commenting on the fact that Margot Robbie is the most beautiful human being ever so it's kind of funny to have casted her as Barbie and other really funny things like that but anyways those are my thoughts when it comes to Barbie it's honestly one of my favorite movies of the year let me know down in the comments what you thought about it because honestly I loved it and I'm gonna see it again next week and dress up because like this is an experience that I have to have that's just me though you do whatever you want if you like this video here are other things that you might like on my channel here at the bottom I'm gonna put like different thumbnails on videos that go along the same vein that this one here and here at the top you can see the thumbnail of what I'm working on for next week so stay tuned come back next Wednesday and you might be able to see this wonderful video here but anyways I hope you enjoyed this video don't forget to smash that like button because every single like that you drop will go to all the Barbie and Ken's in the world can I count on you every single version of them every single different job description outfit haircut whatever it doesn't really matter if you love Barbies and Ken's give them some love I'm Patrick and this is Torn Apart. Come on, Barbie, let's go party. Ooh, oh, ooh, oh.